Hi everyone, I just want to say a quick note before we start the kind of actual video today because I was lucky enough to get to visit Lindor's Abbey Distillery again the other day and Murray, their brand ambassador, was kind enough to have a little conversation with me when we thought we'd record it and put it up here for you. So it's a kind of impromptu little quick chat about Lindor's and yeah, I've spoken a bit about them before, of course, when I review their Aquavit and also their new make, but I thought it would be fun to hear from Murray as well. So I hope you'll enjoy the video. So yeah, I'm gonna send you off to me and Murray. Everyone, welcome back. It's Moe Kay, Swedish Risky Girl, and today we're here in stunning Lindor's Abbey. I just already have been to before, of course, but today we have Marnie here, the ambassador for Lindor's. So I thought we'd take the opportunity to just have a little chat to him. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you. <laughs> really? I thought just so everyone knows who you are, how you ended up at Lindor's Abbey, what's your background? Sure. Um, well, I work now as the UK sales manager and brand ambassador for Lindor's. Uh, I've been with Lindor's for a good couple of years now, got into this side of the industry as a brand ambassador from coming in through hospitality, so working in different whiskey bars, restaurants, things like that. Uh, I then had our own little mobile bar business that we like, volunteered ourselves to come in at the very early stages before there was any spirits released to kind of come and do a little bit of a, a sneaky um, sort of a behind the scenes look. So we were saying, oh yeah, we'll come in, we'll make some nice cocktails for the staff with this new elusive spirit that was coming out before the Aquavitae was released. And yeah, and then we, like Drew and Helen, the owners of Lindor's, kind of recognized in myself and Andrew Lenny, who was the original brand ambassador with Lindor's, um, that we had a real passion for what it was that we were doing. Um, we fell in love with the Aquavitae product with Lindor's straight away and we started using it in our own menus. So yeah, Drew and Helen kind of recognized that we had a natural passion for the product and thought how to use it. So it took us on in a bit more of a, a structured way to be ambassadors for Lindor's. And it's been a fantastic being part of that journey. Yeah, because years. it's brilliant. And I mean, we've had the pleasure of trying your brilliant hot toddy with the Aquavita. Yeah. But uh, just so everyone knows what is the Aquavita. So Aquavita is this little guy here. This is something super different for the industry. Um, we are a single malt whiskey distillery, but until the 20th of December this year, um, 2020, we won't actually have whiskey on site. That's because it has to be at least three years and a day old. Um, so we've not quite reached that point yet, but we're super close to, to joining the realms of single malt whiskey. So our Aquavita is something really different. It's using the, uh, the same new make spirit that we make on site from our local barley, from local farms in Fife. Uh, and instead of putting it into cast to become whiskey in the future, we keep a little bit of the, the unaged malt back, our new make spirit, and we keep some back unaged. We don't redistill it, we put it into some vats with some um, botanicals, some spices and fruits to create a really unique style spirit drink that in my opinion is quite in the middle ground somewhere between whiskey, gin and spice rum. So it sounds, it sounds a bit bizarre, but it's a bit more of going back to the very origins of Scottish distilling, um, before there was rules around maturation and having to use casks um, to like oak casks for maturing the spirit for at least three years. The monks didn't quite know about that in the early days so to make the spirit a little bit more well-rounded when it was coming off of their stills they were adding botanical spices and fruits just like this and we've just brought it up to date for a modern palette and made it really versatile for making good cocktails things like that too. So aquavitae meaning water of life in Latin which through the years in Scotland we started calling Ushka Bay, or Ushka Bay in Scotland and Ireland, and which we now call Whiskey. And the earliest reference of Aquavitae coming from here at Lindor's at 1494 is the kind of line in the sand that has been drawn for the whiskey industry uh, as the sort of start date for Scotch whiskey. So that earliest reference to Aquavitae coming from 1494 here at Lindor's. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of 
amazing history you have here in the venues. Like we just had a look at the Abbey Ruins, which are basically here. We're looking at them at the moment. And you have this stunning distillery that's just up and coming and making your spirits, which is soon whiskey. And then you have, I think this is an incredible product. I've reviewed it before, so if you're curious about that, check that out. But it's everything from what you've done with the bottle design to the flavors. And of course, like I said before, I would say the best hot toddy you'll find in Scotland, yeah, yeah. made by Murray. So, do you want to share some of your recipe? Like, what what actually goes into your hot toddy? Yeah. So, well, for the hot toddy itself, it's just kind of trying to do like a really traditional style um, with uh, lemon, hot water, a good quality honey. I like to use uh, local heather honey if possible for us. So it becomes known as like the free hot toddy, mm -hmm. uh, which is the Gaelic for heather. And so I grew up in a little village called Tricky. <laughs> uh, and so try to keep those kind of connections always going through. So yeah, so we use like a nice local heather honey, um, touching on some of this, the same spice notes that are already in the aquavitae, just accentuating those a little further for the hot drink, using things like um, cardamom, um, cinnamon, nutmeg, things like that, and some ginger. And yeah, and it's just really a, a nice little base to really let the sort of aquavitae sort of like, like sort of shine through as well. Uh, just sort of heat up and accentuate some of those flavours that are present in here. So you can make a super simple one of just honey, lemon, hot water and aquavitae and it's fantastic too. So just a nice little easy to make one in the house. It's very versatile. Super versatile, yeah. So it's it always comes into its own really at this time of year. It's very autumnal, very winter product anyway. Um, so we've been talking today when we've been tasting different spirits of perhaps the cliche note sometimes to use of Christmas cake. Uh, but it's an undeniable kind of Christmas cake style flavour to this. Fruit loaf um, with the, the multi base and then spices and dried fruits. So it's rested on dates and raisins to finish and colour the, the product. So it has this very sort of wintry kind of feel anyway. Delicious mm. in spring and summer cocktails, but really easy to, to play around with for flexibility for autumn and winter serves too. So. That's amazing. And I think what I think is really incredible is that there's no artificial colourings or no. flavourings. All, all the sweetness comes from the raisin and dates. Absolutely. And what we've really gotten to realise here at our visit at Lindor's today is that the team behind Lindor's really think about everything you've thought about Aqua Vitae because that's something that's really associated with the history of the place and of course with your upcoming whisky. Is there anything about Lindor's that is like your favourite fact or favourite memory or anything like that? Uh, I just, it's, it sounds a bit, a, a little bit sort of like cliche to say that you, you, you get goosebumps when you come into a distillery, whatever, but it's, it is a fantastic facility to come and visit. It's not just, um, we are very much all about the quality of the spirit we're making, but we are so fortunate to be in such a beautiful location as well. Um, for the last few years, we've been featured in top 10, top 5 lists of Scotland's most beautiful distilleries to visit. Uh, we've been given five stars as a visitor attraction from Visit Scotland for the last two years. And so although the, the main focus of what we're doing is making world-class um, spirit and world-class whiskey, we, we have a beautiful place to come and visit as well. So you're learning so much more than just the ins and outs of making spirit. It's a lot more about the, the, like the sort of tangible aspect of like how the monks were living when they were making these back in the day. The site here has been here since 1191. Uh, which is incredible. Yeah, yeah. so an in, ancient site, ancient ruins, but with a, like, sat nice on top of that is a very nice forward-thinking, innovative whiskey distillery. Yeah. Uh, but blending very nicely together, um, this kind of, lots of modern techniques meets ancient traditions, really blending nicely together, and it's a really sort of humble spot to come and experience where the, the monks who were making the first spirit were sort of treading the same floors. Kind of the home of Scotch whisky. That's absolutely, yeah. So it's, yeah, it dates all the way back to 1494, like we say. So known to, to many as a sort of pilgrimage spot now for people to come the world over, to come and visit. Um, and it's just a fantastic place to, to not, not just to drink malt spirits, but just to kind of reflect on the history of the area. We do things like um, weddings and private functions and things too. And it's, spectacular location overlooking us by the bear on the hill which I'm sure you've spoken about before for the bear burning 
Yeah, which is an incredible event where there's the kind of logo of Lindros Abbey and kind of the area as yep. well. Um, but something I was thinking about is that, of course, in these times, it is very important to support your distilleries and, of course, your local brands. And it is just an up and coming distillery. And what I, th I think what's incredible about Lindors is that there's a great thought going into it. You know the team behind it, which is incredible. And just as you've managed to do something different, and mm. there's so many people that enjoy it. So it's important to support your local, support your small businesses and your distilleries. But I know you're also doing tours at the moment, so Absolutely, yeah. if you're passing by, come see Lindors. And why? <laughs> Of course, you guys know that I love a quirky fact, and I know that the written reference for Scottish whisky isn't just the oldest thing that's been found here, it's also the oldest reference to something else. That's true, yeah, <laughs> so one of our, perhaps our little secondary mascot that we have, other than the bear and the crooked staff, um, would be some Scotty dogs, as the earliest reference to Scotty dogs, uh, the, the breed of dog coming from Lindor's Abbey, yeah. So we do have our little resident Scotty dog, which is Gus. <laughs> who cuts about most days, so if you see him, he's often happy to see you if you're at front desk because there's some biscuits there. Other than that, he's quite a smelly little uh, rough around the edges little guy, so <laughs> likes his own space. But so basically, come try the Aquavit and come see Gus. Gus is the man, yeah. Gus and is come the man maybe sure. try Scotland's best new make. Absolutely, yeah. So like the, the, the spirit that goes into making the, the base of our Aquavitae and of course, more importantly, fills the cast the, for our upcoming single malt whiskies. Um, our new make spirits, the clear spirit coming off the still, uh, has in 2020 from the World Whiskey Awards been um, given the accolade as Scotland's best new make spirit, which for us as a young distillery is just super exciting and this lets people sort of have a lot of faith in what we're doing. Um, I've said a couple of times to people in the past, with all this history and excitement like, surrounding the distillery, there was perhaps the the option to go around a bit of a sort of Disneyland approach or a, a haggis or a Loch Ness monster kind of appeal to like what we were doing here. Whereas letting people see that the spirit, even just coming off the still before being aged, is being accoladed as the best in Scotland at the minute, is letting us really sort of put a shining light on Gary Haggart and his distilling team, like in the still house, to show that. We're producing fantastic spirit as well as having this immense amount of history and uh, tradition behind us. Yeah, it's brilliant. I mean, you can hear it's just so much. There's so much history, there's a lot of interesting facts. So, if you're passing by, I would definitely recommend coming seeing the team here at Lindors. And of course, at the moment, I know it's not the best to travel, so we're saying to see Lindors, right? Stay, stay indoors. Stay, <laughs> stay indoors, yeah. <laughs> Maybe get a hot toddy and get some acrobate to warm you up. But thank you so much, Mario. Is there anything you we haven't really discussed that you think? No, of? not I don't. I think we've covered most things. It's just um, <laughs> as lots of sort of distilleries at the minute will be telling people that uh, like things online uh, have been doing really, really well. But a major focus for what we have is our relationship with uh, independent bottlers, uh, independent like stockists. Like them. Um, so we're really, really behind supporting your local bottle shop. Um, so much so that. We, if you're picking up a bottle of Aquavitae in a in a local shop, uh, it'll, it'll come with a free tour voucher as well. Amazing. So it's a chance for you to kind of support your local stockists and in, in return come and visit us for free and come for a nice tour at Lindor's and come and celebrate at the spiritual home of Swatch Whiskey. That is brilliant. I mean, I'm sure there's lots of people out there that have tried it already. And if you have, please let me know in the comments below what you think. I'm sure I'll be back and we'll chat about the whiskey maybe next time. Absolutely, it's very, very <laughs> close now. So we've had a wee chance today to try some samples and I'm sure anybody that's had a chance to, to, to taste will agree that it's going in a fantastic direction. Definitely. Well, thank you so much, Murray. No worries, thank you. Yeah, and I hope you've all had an absolutely wonderful day. Slandrava, Scone. Slandrava. Hi again guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. It was a lot of fun talking to Murray about all things Lindors and I mean it's a stunning place and last time it was pouring down with rain so we were very happy that we got to see the ruins this time. It's something when you're standing in an area like that, it's from 1191 I think and it has a history of whiskey. I mean I can't imagine a better place to kind of sip a, a whiskey or 
the hot toddy of course which I'm a big fan of and uh, I'm gonna try and make my own version but I doubt it will be as good as Mars because that's absolutely stunning but yeah I hope you've enjoyed the video and of course if you like what I'm doing here on YouTube and my other social channels I'd be absolutely over the moon if you consider using my affiliate links the next time you're shopping with either Master Mall, the Whiskey Exchange or the Scotch Mall Whiskey Society. All the information is in the section here below as well as links to my other channels, my Patreon, my Teespring shop, my website or my Instagram if you're curious about that. As always, a massive thank you to my wonderful supporters on Patreon. You guys are amazing and I'm so grateful you want to continue to support me on my whiskey journey. Every little really, really helps. And of course, if you want to support the channel or just have a look at some exclusive content and behind the scenes, check that one out there. But I hope you've all had an absolutely wonderful day. Slendra, skål!